we're talking about the Magic 8. And previously, this was called the Magic 6, from what I understand. And when I say the Magic 8 and the Magic 6, these are props.com configurations that when you build out a props for data, like for yourself, um, these are the six that you absolutely need. And the reason is, is because Splunk does a lot of stuff automated and automagically, um, but like almost everything else in Splunk, the automagic parts don't always get it right. Um, like if you're ever familiar with the in like house GUI field extractor where auto field extractor, uh, where it does the regex for you, it's pretty basic. You can't do advanced field extraction. Um, same thing goes with your props.com. Um, by default, it kind of gives you the default line breaker, the default line merge, the default timestamp, which works for the most basic of data types, uh, but not necessarily anything outside of that. Um, so there is actually a really amazing uh, resource that we can use here called this Aplura Cheat Sheet. Um, and I've used this since like the day I was hired and started working. And what this does, if we take a look at it here, this box right here is the most important box of the whole place because these are the six slash eight uh, configurations that we're talking about that we set up in a props.conf. Let's kind of back it up a bit though. Because <laughs> I'm saying a lot of words, right? I'm saying props.conf, I'm saying source types, and maybe we don't necessarily know what all those things are. So uh, within Splunk, right, you're probably familiar with indexes and source types. The index is sort of the big house where all the data sits. You designate, you know, something like win event log, and you push Windows event logs into win event log. And then it is also applied a source type, and a source type defines the format in which the data looks. If you don't have source types and you push data into an index, it's just going to be a big wall of text. Um, it's not going to separate your events out. It's not going to extract your fields. It's not going to recognize the timestamp. It's not going to do any of that. Like I said, Splunk does this automatically, uh, but sometimes they don't get it right. And those really come up when you have uh, events that have multiple timestamps within it. Um, because you might have the time of the event that it happened, uh, the, or the time in which the event is indexed, the time of the event which it happened. Uh, you might have login times, log off times, server down times, server up times. You know, there's all kinds of timestamps that could sit within uh, an event. And if there's multiple, say three or four different time values within the, an event, Splunk's going to get real confused real fast on figuring out which one is the correct timestamp to give it the event time. And so we want to set up, we want to make sure that we use these settings to ensure uh, that Splunk is documenting the right thing. And so there's two ways to, to do, to go about this, and I'll go through both of those methods. Let me open up Sublime Text here. We'll say, what is today? October 1st, October 1, 2020, at... Uh, uh, 09 colon 17 and 32, 23, uh, server A is down. And then we'll go ahead and create a few more events here. Change some of these values. Server B is down. Server B is up. Server A is up. And then these happen at different times. We'll say this happened at 8.17, this happened at 7.17, and this happened at 6.17, all today. Got a little crazy sporadic server behavior here. I'll go ahead and save this file somewhere. And we will call this a server, call these server events dot log. I'll go ahead and save it on my desktop. That way I know where it's at. So from the GUI, um, the way we can, well, so we can do this one of two ways. From the GUI, we can go to settings and we can go to source types. 
And then as always, we can always hit new source type. We can give it a name, call it server events. And we'll give it a description. Or we don't have to give it a description. We'll choose the app that we want to sit in here. Uh, because I am uh, doing this uh, just without an app or an add-on, I'll just use searching and reporting. If I had my own custom app for this data, I'd probably put it there, um, but I don't. And then, so under here is kind of the important part. These three tabs, uh, event breaks, this is to define event breaking, right? What is a line and what is the start and end of the event? Um, you could set it to auto, which will let Splunk try to fig figure that out. You could do every line, which is saying, you know, as long as this is a line, uh, break the event. This would be good for the file I just made. If I have a file where the event is paragraphs long or has or is of a different format, such as like JSON or XML, this is very bad because every line, especially in an XML or JSON, is going to be its own event. My recommendation and best practices always, 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 always use regex because then we can set or we could define the beginning and the end of a uh, of an event. Now for line breaking, there is a stock or a default value here called the line breaker stanza. And it's this right here, this parentheses square bracket slash R this, this is your standard line breaker. Along with this, if we take the data that we just made and put it into regex 101, which let me open up that real quick here. And let me grab my lines here. We can, right? So we want to figure out where our event needs to start. In this case, uh, it looks like there is a date starting our event. So I want to build a regex that's gonna highlight a date. Now, <clears throat> What I do want to know, what I do want to talk about is uh, regex is all about patterns. And so if this, if the start of your event is going to be consistent at all times, then you can give a generic regex like a time for like this time format. It captures the first line here. And it's always going to capture that. And so we know that this is going to be the start of the event. Uh, if this changes or the beginning is different or there's a header or things like that, you have to be aware of those kinds of things and build your regex to make sure that you're capturing all the events. And so we can go ahead and take this regex and throw it into Splunk along with our line breaker. And that would define the line breaker. But that's not the only thing that I want to do, right? If we refer back to the six, we have line breaker. So we got that knocked out. Uh, subtly, we got should line merge knocked out. And what these two do, uh, line breaker, right, regular expression to break up the events. That's what we just built here. And then should line merge is essentially this format right here. There's a, it is a Boolean. So it either takes a true or false value. If should line merge equals true, then it's going to try and merge all the lines that correlate with a certain event. Um, when doing a line, a manual line breaker, you need to set it to false. And what that does is should line merge equals false, essentially breaks it up into individual lines. So in order to get a lot to define a full event breaking or a line breaker, you need to set should should line merge to false. That way we break all our our data into individual lines and then use line breaker to define the start of the event. That way it then starts grouping our events or our lines together based on the start of the event. If it doesn't match that pattern, then it gets jumbled into the event. So in this case, if I go back to regex 101, we've defined that this is the start of the event. Anything afterwards, no matter how much I keep typing, is going to be a part of that event until it meets this next pattern. 
So it's very important. That's why I emphasize that whatever the pattern for the start of the event needs to be clearly defined in the regex. If there's a question about it, like if I have some random date in here, October 2nd, 2020, at, oh, at 10, it's going to start saying that that is an event in and of itself. And so we need to redefine our regex because we don't want to break up our events halfway when it might just be a time that needs to be noted within the event itself. So going back to here, um, this is fine, right? You could hit save and then that'd be it. However, there are six settings and we've only covered two. The next is timestamp. 